In our next lesson, we're talking about XML sitemaps. An XML sitemap is a file that contains individual pages of the website. It helps search engines to get a much better understanding of the structure and of the volume of contents of a website. It also enables search engines to crawl the website more intelligently because they get the data, especially all URLs, in a structured format. XML sitemaps should be used when a website is very extensive. Smaller websites do not necessarily need one. Generally, it's important to understand that XML sitemaps do not direct impact rankings, although they can be very helpful for a new website with few external links, as well as for large archives. Furthermore, Google uses sitemaps to understand what the canonical version of the given URL is. Search engines do support different types of sitemaps. So say you want to be listed in Google News, then there are specific Google News sitemap formats. The same is also true for images and other media content, for example, video. XML sitemaps are generally not visible to your end users. Usually they reside in locations like domain.com slash sitemap.xml. However, it's also possible to host sitemaps on third-party domains, which, especially for larger scale sites, can make lots of sense. When you create an XML sitemap, you need to consider a couple of things, including limitations. For example, very large sitemaps need to be divided into several smaller ones. So the one limitation is that the sitemap cannot contain more than 50,000 URLs at once, and it cannot exceed 50 megabytes in file size. Uncompressed, that is. Generally, the recommendation is to use gzip compression and to use UTF-8 encoding. Be also aware of cryptic URLs. Once you have to split your sitemap into multiple ones, use the sitemap index file. This is essentially a container file that links to all the available sub-sitemaps. When manually creating an XML sitemap, be aware of the different elements that need to be present in the sitemap file. The only content really required is actually the URL itself, which you want to submit using the sitemap. Optionally, you can also submit a last modified date, a change frequency, and you can also use and help Google with priorities. From a more practical standpoint, generating those optional data points with the XML sitemap is usually a waste of time. Personally, I believe the best use case for an XML sitemap is essentially to see this as a tool that tells Google that there are different URLs that they should consider crawling ASAP. Google is much smarter than just relying on you telling them which URL is more important than another one. Don't waste your time on the optional stuff. Make sure to tell Google about your sitemap's existence, though. There are multiple ways to do this. You could either use the robot's text file to link the XML sitemap or the sitemap index file. Also, you could use Google Search Console, and there is an option in the sitemaps tab which allows you to submit one or also multiple sitemaps. In this case, you can get some very interesting information from Google, though. They will basically tell you how many URLs you have submitted, how many of them have been worthy, and how are they actually indexed. Breaking down sitemaps into various files can also have other purposes. For example, you can do it for categorization, which then helps you to understand if all the major categories have been indexed, for example. There is no limit to have multiple sitemaps, which is a great feature, actually. So if you want to debug and understand how Google sees your overall URL inventory, consider creating multiple sitemaps based on the different contents that you actually have. Lastly, sitemap quality is also very, very important. A sitemap must only contain URLs that serve a HTTP 200 response. There should be no redirects. There should be no URLs that are blocked for robots using either robots text or the robots meta tag. Keep it clean and Google will love your sitemap file. SEMrush site audit can be very helpful to make your sitemap flawless. By using the issues tab within the tool, you can make sure that your sitemap files aren't too large and that they are free of format errors or any incorrect pages. Also, to see whether you've included all your important pages in your sitemap, refer to the crawl pages report and simply apply the proper filter.